Babylon can't stop this campaign. campaign. Rampage, cause I know why the heat the rage. Cause the guys be bringing it out. We bringing this it kingdom, out. we bringing it down. Yeah. Lost sheep, we'd have been found. Yeah. Wait until we get a crown. Crown talk. Yeah. This that crown talk. Yeah. Yeah. Me or my don't want be like Nino Brown now. Yeah. Cause this that king talk. Yeah. Real life king talk. Yeah. Like Solomon, I see things clearly like a greenhouse. The wordplay can't get colorful. The scriptures cutting you the butter too. Not to mention we a living legend. Don't know what to do when a myth is standing right in front of you. You better watch and just take notes. The father sent the flood then a rainbow, but his son coming back with fire, so it ain't gonna be no more scapegoats. Let me tell you what the prophecy, unparalleled with the prophecies. Stopping fritz, bodies in the street. My people, property in this monopoly. Call it America, where the dreams come true, where nightmares and the demons come too. The side of might agenda. I don't give a damn if you offended cause this what Christ look like read it. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14 his hair and his his head and his hairs were white like wool so the Bible says Christ his head and his hairs his head and his hair because back in the day a beard was not called a beard, it was called hairs. All right? It was white what? White like wool. Fully gray and the texture of wool. That was a term given to our texture hair back in the day, woolly. Woolly, you ever heard that? Woolly, nappy, kinky. All right? But that's the wool, that's the hair of a Negro. All right? It's like a sheep. All right? So keep reading. As white as snow. Fully gray. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So the images they gave us in church, shot. He was a blue-eyed guy, right? That's a lie. Bible says what? As red, uh, flame of, excuse me. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because Christ drank wine. His first miracle was he turned water into wine. White, right pressures. You ever heard that before? So when, the, when, when a black man drank wine, the white of his eyes turned red. All right? Keep reading. And his feet. So, so John looked at Christ's feet. All right? John looked at Christ's feet, Shy. Let's see what John saw when he looked at his feet because Christ told him to describe, to write what he see in a book. All right, read. And his feet like unto fine brass. My brother, what color is brass? Like a, like a gold, like a derivative of a gold, like a derivative of brown, right? It's almost like brown, right, Shy? Like brown. All right, read that part again all the way through. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So if we burn anything in a furnace, what color will it get? What, what color will it get? You burn rice. You burn popcorn. You What? So what color is Christ? Now my, hey, should I put a smile on her face? She learned that Christ was black. Huh? Bring it out. Am I right? So which image right here is a better depiction of Christ? This one or this one? This one. So you don't, you shouldn't give a damn what people show you. If they show you something, tell them to prove it. The Bible says prove it. Right. You know that? Bible, give me that uh, First Thessalonians 5 and 21. The Bible says prove all things. So what we're doing is we are here to, to debunk all the lies we've been taught. Because we need to change the mind of our people. Because our people have been taught lies since we got off the boat. Understand that. All right? Because the Bible says prove all things. We're going to read that. You got it? Alright, that's first Thessalonians. I'll read. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5 and verse 21. Prove all things. Read it again. Prove all things. So that's what we're doing. We're proving all things. When they tell you that 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 uh uh that Christ is black or Christ is white, we're gonna prove that that's a lie. Christ is a black man. The same people that was brought over here on the slave ships, Christ looks like them. We are. We come from the the, uh, the image, the bloodline of Christ. Christ was a Jew from the tribe of Judah. Give me that in Hebrews seven. All right, because we're going to show you who you are today. We're going to show you your nationality, bro. We're going to show you your nationality, sis. All right, because everybody around here, you know, they right here doing all this wicked stuff, getting ready for these wicked holidays that are not godly. Christmas, it's not godly. Thanksgiving, we just had it. It's not godly. We're not supposed to be celebrating those days. All right. 
great. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. Check this out. For it is evident. That it is evident. It is, it is, it is a recording. Read. That our Lord sprang out of Judah. So our Lord Jesus Christ came out of the tribe of Judah. There was 12 tribes. The so-called, hey sis, you come from the tribe of Judah. Bro, you come from the tribe of Judah. Look at this sign right here. Look at this sign right here. Your father, your dad, your dad. All right, this your wife, your girlfriend, your girlfriend. All right, your dad is a so-called black man, right? All right, so look on this on this sign right here and tell me tell me what because on the right on the on this side is what God calls us This is our national our, nation, our tribe the tribe you're in according to the Bible on this side is what they call you in the world today So what would you be called according to this sign? What would you what would you on this sign? What would you be called? You would be from the tribe of Judah. How about you sis? So your father the man carries a seed do we not? So you are what your father is understand that there's no mixed race in the Bible you understand that you hear what I said there's no mixed race in the Bible you are what your father is so you will be from, you will be an Israelite shy from the tribe of Judah precious you will be an Israelite from the tribe of Judah understand that that is your nationality understand that that is your nationality your nationality don't change okay like if I ask you your name you said precious if I ask you your nationality the same amount of time it took for you to t ask your name it should take the same amount of time for you to tell me your nationality. That's how that goes. Understand that? So now, let me ask you, you said this is your girlfriend, right? All right. Uh, uh, our people all the time when they go to church, they're always talking about blessings, right? Give me give me Psalms, give me Psalms 9 and 4, start at 12. Our people all the time talking about blessings. You want to be blessed? Would you like to be blessed? You like to know how to get blessed? All right? Because blessings don't just fall off a tree. All right? You have a money tree in your backyard? I don't have one either. So blessings don't just fall off a tree. You have, to, you have to do certain things for God to bless you. Did you hear what I just said? What did I just say? You have to do certain things for God to bless you. Pay attention now. You, you keep, you're looking for somebody? Huh? Because this is more important than anything that's going to come down the street right now. I'm telling you. I promise you. All right? Shy? Precious? You look, do you want God to bless you? All right? Do you know that you have to do certain things for God to bless you? All right? Let me, let me, let me show you. Now, I want, I want you to, that now, Take the medicine. You know, when you was a kid, your mom gave you medicine. It didn't taste good all the time, right? But it was good for you, right? The Bible is like that too. Now, I'm going to tell you some things. You may not like it, but it's going to help you. I promise you. All right, you ready? Read that. 12, 12. Start at 12. Psalm chapter 9 and verse 94. 94. All right, because, because the thing about church is they don't tell you what the Bible says. They tell you the good things to get deep in your pocket so you can give that, you bring that money. All right? That's what they do. All right? So, but we out here, we out here, we not, we not out here for feelings. We not out here for numbers. We not out here for money. You don't see no money plate up here. We out here to give our people the truth. All right, no matter if it's, if it's good or bad, you're going to get it. All right, read. Psalms chapter 94. 12. And verse 12. I'm sorry. Sorry, verse 12. Psalms chapter 94 and verse 12. Blessed is the man who thou chastised. What did the Bible say? Shot. Check this out. Read it again. Blessed is the man who thou chastise. What is chastise? Huh? Okay. How, you, you, when you was a kid, my man, you older brother, what's chastising? What is chastising? You get what? Punch. You hear what he said? You hear what he said, uh, Precious? What did he say? What did he say? Say it again, bro, loud. You get you heard what he said? Punished. All right, read it again. Blessed is the man who chast thou chastise. No, it says blessed who the man who gives his tithe. Blessed is the man whom thou chastise. Man or woman. So we're gonna we're gonna so the, so the Bible says, Blessed is the man who thou chastise. All right? Who thou punish. Uh, uh, or or give a, a, a verbal chastising by telling you you're right and wrong. You understand that? All right, so check this out. Keep reading. O Lord, and teacheth him out of thy law. So how do you get how do you get chastised? Read it again. O Lord, and teacheth him out of thy law. So blessed is the man who is chastised, O Lord, teach them out of the law. The laws of God, the laws of the Bible. You're, the, the right things you're supposed to do and the things you're not supposed to do. Understand that. Because you don't get that in the church. The church don't give you the law. They don't chastise you with the laws of God. Understand that. So... Check this out. Keep reading. Verse 13. 
that thou mayest give him rest from the days of that of adversaries. So you're going to get rest if you follow the law. If you take the chastisement of the Bible, you're going to get rest from your adversary, your, your adversaries or your enemies. That's what adversaries mean. Your adversaries are those who are adversely against you. You understand that uh, shot? So those are your adversaries. So you're going to have rest in those final days because we're going to be put back in rulership if we follow this Bible. All right, read. Pay attention. Verse 14. For the Lord will not cast off his people. What does that say? For the Lord will not cast off his people. So the Lord would not cast off his people. Give me that in Matthew 2. Uh, six, it's 2 and verse 6. Let me show you who God's people is. All right, because we, we, we hear in the church that everybody is God's people. You ever heard that before? You heard people say, well, we, we all God's people. That's not true. Because I told you in the beginning, we are here to cast off lies. Because in church, you've been, given, you've been fed lies. That's right. All right, read that. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 6. Read. And thou, and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, Read. art not the least among the princes of Judah. All right. The princes of Judah is we just read Judah. All right. We're from the tribe of Judah. Israel name was Israel name was changed. It was it was born uh, Jacob name changed to Israel. We are the tribe of Judah. Read. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Rule who? My people who? My people Israel. So the governor is Jesus Christ. His people is Israel. All right, understand that. So we are the Israelites. So go back to go back to Psalms 94. All right? So we're going to paint a picture because we want you to understand this, bro. All right? My brother Shy, uh Precious want you to understand this. Read. All right? Because you never heard this before in church. All right? Sis, you never heard this. Then if you get if you got questions while I'm while I'm teaching, Hey, raise your hand or just let me know and we'll answer the questions that you may have some questions about the Bible that you never knew. All right, some lies you was told a long time ago that didn't make sense. Right? Read. Hold on. Hold on. All right. How old are you, sis? 23? How, about you? how old are you, bro? 24? All right, y'all young. All right, how long y'all been together? Huh? How many? Three. Three years? Three years? Y'all married? You're not married? You work, you work somewhere? Where you work at? Green Bay? What is that? What does that do? What do they do? Paper come. All right, read that. Psalm chapter 94, verse 14. Read. For the Lord will not cast off his people. So we know who, who, who God's people are, right? Who is God's people? Israel. So did you know that you, so you know that you are God's people? You are the tribe of Israel, read. And neither will he forsake his heritage. All right, so we are God's heritage. The church of Israel. We're God's heritage. He's not going to forsake us. Read. Verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? So God has a question for my brother, my sister. He has a question. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? That's what we are here doing right now. We're standing up for God against the evilness that's happening against our people. We're not, on the, on the, uh, uh, we're not out in Oak Grove. Okay? You don't see us out there teaching. Because most of our people are living where? Around here. Most of our people are struggling. Most of our people are trying to get by from day to day. 2 and verse 14. So it says, Blessed are the man or woman who thy chastise. All right? So y'all see y'all been, been, been dealing with each other for like three years. All right? But has things been going good for you for those past three years? Or things been kind of rough? Be honest. Come on. Be kind of, be kind of, huh? I mean, but it hasn't been good. All right? Give me Hebrews uh, 13 and 4. All right, because let me show you why things have been rough for you. All right, y'all ready for this? Because it says, blessed is the man who thou chastised. All right, because I'm going I'm to give you a little chastising right now, if you don't mind, bro. You don't mind, right? You don't mind? Because you, you probably need it, don't you? You haven't had your ass whooped in a long time, have you? <laughs> All right, so let, here we go. Let's read this. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. I want y'all to get this because I'm dealing with both of you. All right, read. Marriage is honorable in all. What is honorable? Marriage is honorable in all. So my sister Precious, come, come, come close, come close, come close, Precious, <laughs> come close. I'm not gonna bite you. Now it says marriage is honorable, right? What is dishonorable? If marriage is honorable, what is dishonorable? If what is if marriage is honorable, what is dishonorable? Marriage is honorable. What is dishonorable? What? Is, come on, bro. I know you know. If marriage is honorable, what is dishonorable? Not being married. No, no, not being married. 
not being married and you're doing the things as married people do. Are y'all are y'all are y'all laying down? Y'all 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 acting as a married couple, right? Hey, we grown folks, you 23, 23, 24. All right. So let's read it again. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. So when you're in the bed and you're laying down together in the bed and you're married, that is honorable in the sight in the sight of God. You understand that? You see how that works? If you're married and you're involved with each other three years and you're and you're married, what you whatever you do in the bed, that is honorable. Read. And the bed undefiled. So your bed would not be defiled. Your bed would not be in a dishonor to God. Read. But whoremongers. But who? Whoremongers. But who? Whoremongers. Read. And adulterers. Read. God will judge. So if you're not married and you're laying down in the bed, God is called God call you a what? A whoremonger. You know that was in the Bible, did you say? Alright? A whoremonger. What is what is what is a short form of a whoremonger? A whore. Alright? So we don't we want to fix that in our community. That's what we are here for. So we're telling the black man, if you love the black woman, then you need to what? Marry her. You need to marry her. Have you ever thought about marrying her? You love, you've been with her for three years. You know, she put up with you behind for three years. Huh? So you should marry her. All it takes is $35. Did you know that? All it takes is $35. You got a job? You got a job? You got a job? What's the problem? You got money. All right? You got money. You got a place to stay? You got a house? You got a place to stay? You got an apartment or whatever? Someone to stay? All right? Bro, this is, this is, this is honorable because... Amongst our people, our, you got y'all got children together. You got children. Do your do your children a service, not a disservice, but do them a service. By so when they when they grow up, they can say my mama and my daddy, and she can say my husband and not my baby daddy, and you can say my wife and not my baby mama, because we hear that a lot in, amongst our people. Do we not? Do we not? Why don't we hear this amongst the white folks? Why don't we hear this amongst the Chinese? Why don't we hear this? Why says they what? They're married. So what's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? We listen to a lot of garbage. We listen to a lot of rap music, and we and they glorify hoeing out our sisters. Bring it out. They glorify that, and so our young men growing up, that's what they do. They rock with that. Then our sisters, they become desensitized. They don't mind being hoed out. We need to put a stop to it. That's right. Read that again. Hebrews chapter 4, uh, 13, verse 4. Because I want y'all to get that. I want y'all to get this. And you don't get nothing else. Get your nationality. You're an Israelite. You can't rock like everybody else. <coughs> Christ is black. He's not a white guy. Bring it out. You got to marry the sister. All right? We're going to get a, couple, um, a few more things because you want to be blessed. You got to get this chastising. You got to get this correction. Because you're the head of the family. It's not 50-50. Did you know that? All right, read. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You best believe that. God is going to judge you. He's going to judge you in the present, in, on, on, while you walk in the earth. And if you don't get right, he's going to judge you in death again. All right? Understand that. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. All right? Because, because, because there's some things. You got to use the bathroom? Go inside right, right there. But I want you to get this, sis. Put it on. I want you to get this, all right? Because this is for you. Because how many kids you got? You got three, all right? Now you want them. You want them to to, to, to grow up being a. You got girls or boys? All boys. All boys, right? Now you want them to grow up. You know, being. What you did. Let me ask you a question. Was your father in the house when you were growing up? You didn't have a father, right? But do you want that same life for your kids? How you change it? This is how you change it. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. You have to get yourself right. All right? Because you can't teach the kids nothing unless you're doing unless you're doing it yourself, right? You understand that? You believe that, right? All right? Because you're a young sister. I got I got a daughter your age. All right? Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. You ever heard that before? All right? You understand it? So explain it to me. Come close. Explain it to me. Is, it, is that clothing? That is exactly clothing. So what kind of clothing, what kind of clothing should you not be wearing? That's, that's, that's it. Not be wearing. 
Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Keep reading. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So what garment should we not be wearing? What clothing should we not be wearing? Us brothers up here. Us men. What should we not be wearing? That a woman's supposed to be wearing. We got on pants. No. How about a dress? You did, did you set a dress? I said a dress. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. So we should not be wearing a dress, right? Who should be wearing a dress? Us, your women. You, the women. So let's read it again. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Read it again because we need it. you need to get that because if you don't do this, God calls you, it says, an abomination. It's a despicable thing. It's like vomit. If that's, that's, that's some of the worst stuff. Or, or roadkill. That's an abomination. All right. Read it again. 22 and 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination to the Lord thy God. All women that are cross-dressing, all men that are cross-dressing, Shanae, Big Mama, uh, 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 Martin Lawrence, all that, that's an abomination. Medea, that's an abomination. It may sound funny. It may look funny. Ha, ha, ha. But hey, but we learn our, our young men. You start to see that now in a lot of rappers, are you not? All right, that's an abomination. We shouldn't be doing that. Our sisters need to put on a dress, a modest dress, not no hoochie. All right, not something they got to sit down and they they, they got to walk walk around tugging on all day long. Right? You you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about, right? They bend over and dog on, you know, lights out, all that kind of you know. So you need to put on a modest dress, right? This is what the Bible says. This is the chastisement that precious need today. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.